it's um, it's time for a live video on beyond the pain group welcome good evening to you how are you how is your day been i trust uh, the lord has is good to you and has been faithful to you in every way i apologize um, for coming in uh, a little bit late uh, later than advertised um, uh, some things just didn't go the way i thought this evening praise god in everything thank god we're here and uh, we just want to spend this time together to encourage one another in the Lord and to inspire you in wherever you are in your journey with the Lord this evening. Um, this, this song really has, um, by Dulce has ministered quite a lot to me since the beginning of this week. I stumbled on it last Sunday and the more I sang it, the more it's really blessed me. And that's what I want to start with this evening. I just want you to... Um, just ponder on it how a praise becomes our weapon of battle our weapon of warfare indeed praise is a, is a, is the weapon of warfare it is spiritual warfare and i can testify of that in many spheres of my battle you know in, in all the battles that i have had to fight so um as we circle in uh, come together i just want us to meditate on that song how our praise rises up to God and when God hears our praise I mean it delights him our worship brings God into our circumstances and so he says this is how I win my battle and I thank God for this reminder you know so I want you to just think about it like when we, when we praise God when we worship God good evening welcome let's know who is there when we praise God, when we worship Him, God responds to our praises because it delights Him. It shows that we are magnifying Him. We are putting Him above everything else that is going on in our lives. Our praises really, it stimulates God. Um, and, and I know I've shared that quite often in different forms on this group that um, irrespective of what we're going through, we need to just rise up, you know, praise God and worship Him. And, you know, He deserves all our praises. He, de he deserves all our adoration. Our God is good. Our God is excellent. Yeah. He is the one that we can magnify over and over again and be assured that, I mean, we cannot thank Him enough. We cannot expect. We can never praise Him enough. We cannot worship Him enough. We can never be exhaust the reasons why we should bless the name of the Lord. And for me, it's um, something that I remind myself over and over and over again that, ah, God, you are good. And honestly, God is good. He is so good to us that he, th he is mindful of us. And that's what we're going to be talking about this evening. God is mindful of you. God is mindful of me. He is mindful of you and I. Hallelujah. Oh, to my worship. Says of my worship. Hallelujah. Rose up to the Father. Noises, bright and voice be true. To my worship. Yes, it was fragrance turned to fire. <laughs> weapon is like my weapon. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. Hallelujah. It's fragrance. Thank you, God. It turns to fire. My worship is my weapon. That's how I win my battle. I mean, I woke up this morning and that was the line that I was singing in my spirit, you know, that my worship is my weapon. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is how I win my battle. And I believe that this is the same for each and every one of us when we come to this realization, this understanding that the praises, the worship that we offer to God, it, it makes a way from our breakthrough. We praise through to breakthrough. Our praises rise up to God. He, he responds to our situation. And like I was saying, He deserves our praises. He thinks about us. He, 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 he understands us. There is no facet of our lives that God does not understand or anything about us that God is not aware of. 
And I, that's what I want to share with you this evening. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just put that down so that we're here. You know, I don't know if you're facing major, major challenges and you're feeling isolated and alone or um, you're thinking that no one knows what is going on with you or nobody even cares about you. And I've had that so often, especially with this isolation. Somebody called me yesterday and was telling me about a young adult, a teenager who committed suicide right here in Switzerland. And you ask yourself, why would a young child, a, a, a teenager who has the whole future ahead of her, who commit suicide? And you know, in this country where we live, Switzerland, it's what, it has one of the highest rates of teenage suicide. It's when people feel so isolated that nobody cares about me. I mean, and you know, it, it, it's one of the suggestions of the enemy, the lies of the enemy. I think it was last week that I was talking to us about being discouraged. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome, every one of you. Welcome. Let's know who is there. God bless you. It's the lie of the enemy. It brings those suggestions to us and gets us to be discouraged that nobody cares about us. Nobody is even thinking about you. Nobody is checking up on you. And the more you ponder on it and you allow such seeds to sow, you know, to, to take root in your heart, the more you begin to think that life is not worth living. I mean, if anybody commits suicide, it means that they feel that life is not worth living. And I want to let you know that God is mindful of you even if no one is calling you i mean i had an experience um um i think it was over uh, about a couple of weeks ago when was mother's day it was last sunday i think yeah my, my, my time has flown and you know as uh, mother's day was approaching i mean i was just thinking about the fact that i was i mean that morning that day when i woke up that i, I was not going to be able to call my mother i was not going to be able to tell her how much I care about her, you know, and uh, just to let her know that I, I appreciated what she had invested in my life. And somehow I really felt a bit blue. You know, like I said before, discouragement comes like a heavy cloud. I mean, it's, it's the cloud of heaviness. And I knew that I needed to shake it off instant. I wasn't going to give it any room. And so I was just focusing my attention on all the goodness of God and praising God and just worshiping him. And I think further down in the week, something happened again. You know, I did say when I was talking to us about the, 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 the discouragement that we should look out for the triggers. We need to be able to identify the trigger. What is triggering discouragement? What is making you feel that nobody cares about you? Nobody knows where you are. And for me, you know, that day, I, I mean, I, 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 you know, this ice, um, lockdown can really get to you at times. You know, I've had to be, I, don't, I haven't been out of my house for about six weeks now i have not stepped out there you know for over six about six weeks now sometimes it just feels like um the world is just coming smaller and smaller and round about you thank god for social media thank god for zoom thank god for live videos that we can connect with other people but that just sometimes that like, you really long to be amidst people and i'm not ashamed to say that there, i had such longings and the minute I started pondering about it, that gosh, I wanted to, I, you know, I had plans to have to go to Nigeria. I had plans to have, you know, to be here in one place, to be in another place. And it was becoming, you know, more and more difficult to even imagine. When are they going to open the door so that we can move around? When is it even going to be safe for me as an individual, you know, especially as a long transplant survivor, to be able to travel again. And the minute I started punching on, on those thoughts, and it just felt, I felt so isolated. I felt lonely. And goodness, I had to quickly nip it in the board because I didn't want my mind to go off track and take me to places where I didn't want to be. But one thing happened that really touched my heart deeply. In, this, in that phase of mind where I was still trying to deal with that discouragement that wanted to come over me, that feeling of despair, I mean, a, a loneliness, you know, that was about to come over me, I stumbled into some messages that had been written to me on a group and I had not had time to read it. I mean, for one reason or another, I think I went to that group, I wanted to clear the old, you know, the, because the, the messages there were, I think, was in their thousands. 
and I just wanted to clear some of it off. And I just found that they had actually, people have written about me there. And I was reading what they wrote and it just felt like God was hugging me. I mean, I felt loved by God. And you know, it just, it, 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 you know why it mattered to me so much that, that you know, that I'm sharing it with you. And the fact that God knew where I was at that point in time. And he led me to go to that place and just to hear what, you know, people who are praising God on my behalf, who are giving thanks to God because of me. And, and it really, it felt like God wrapped his arms around about me. I felt that God remembered me. God was thinking about me. I mean, and he is constantly thinking about you. And I want to, you know, share with you tonight that you are on God's mind. And perhaps you are not even facing any challenges, you know. Life has fallen on you in, you know, pleasant, life has fallen for you in pleasant places. Everything is going great. But it is also a profound reminder for us to know and to store it up in our heart that come what may, in good times and in bad times, God is mindful of us. That truth of just think about it, that God cares about me. And you know, somebody translated, God is mindful of you, it is thoughtful of you, for me in a way that can never, you know, it left an indelible mark in my memory. And he said that when God is mindful of you, or somebody is mindful of you, it means their mind is full of you. They are constantly thinking about you. You are, they are conscious of you. Boy, <laughs> what amazing thought, what an amazing consideration to know that God is constantly thinking about me, number one. He is mindful of me, number two. I just want to put, pause this for the moment. And I'm in his thoughts. I'm on his mind. So when you're thinking that nobody is thinking about you, nobody cares about you, I want to remind you, I want to share this profound truth with you tonight that God is thinking about you and I'm going to prove it to you from the scriptures that God is mindful of you if you come with me I mean he he not only is mindful of you he knows you by your name the creator of the heavens and the earth calls you he knows exactly where you are he knows the number of ears on your head and i will show it to you in the bible he knows your circumstances he knows where you are located there is absolutely and i read my lips absolutely nothing about you that is hid from god absolutely nothing about you that god is not aware of and you know i mean if god could think you know could be could, could See, if he, if he respond to that feeling of loneliness that I was having in the way that he, 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 he brought messages that, that just lifted my spirit up. Can you imagine how God cares about the minutest details of our lives? And believe me, you may consider those details minute. I want to tell you that God does not consider Anything that is about you, abundance of Aaron, trust the Lord. He is your helper and shield. And all you who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. He is your helper and shield. And then in verse 7, 12, it says, The Lord remembers us and blesses us. He will bless the people of Israel and bless the priest, the descendant. Ha, hallelujah. Thank God we are back. I'm sorry about that. Something was happening with the wireless connection. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to read that the, the, this verse to us, uh, verse 12, in a couple of other translations. Thank you. Welcome back. I apologize. Something, the wireless seems to be misbehaving today. The Lord will see us through. Okay, so um, the KJV says that the Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. <laughs> the Lord remembers us. The Lord takes notice of us. 
he will bless us. The Lord is thinking about us. He's mindful of us. He remembers us. And I'm just saying, all this translation saying the same thing. Either the Lord takes notice of us, God pays attention to us, God is mindful of us, he remembers us. What translation says, the Lord will never forget us in our need. How awesome that is. The Lord will never forget us in our times of need. And he said, um, he went us to say that he, he will bless us. He will bless those who fear him. And then, you know, when you, when you look at the earlier verses that I read, these people, they were being charged. It says that, the, you know, trust the Lord. House of Israel, trust the Lord. Descendants of Aaron, trust the Lord. You who fear the Lord, who hold, who have, all, you know, reverential awe, not fear as being frightened, but a reverential awe of God. Fear the Lord. And why? Because he is our helper and he is our shield. And because he is our helper and our shield, he will remember us. You know, that delivered them from, from things in the past. And he was he's still the same God who would deliver them from bondage again. And that's why they could say that he will bless those who fear him, both the lowly and the great. And they continue to say, may the Lord richly bless you and your children. See, God is so mindful of you that he is already commanding blessings upon your children. And I stand on the authority of this word. And I say that may the Lord bless you and your children because you, they matter to him as you matter to him. Now, if we go further, you know, just establishing to you that God is mindful of every detail of your life. You are on God's mind. You are constantly on God's mind. And for me, there is... It, it, it makes me joyful. It makes me, you know, glad. It makes me feel I am important to God. I mean, you don't think about something that is not important to you. So this gives me an assurance that God, I am uppermost in his mind. He is constantly thinking about me. He is concerned about everything that concerns me. And if we look uh, chapter 8 of Psalm, the psalmist was saying from verse 3, that when I behold your heavens, the works of your hands, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, you know one thing, just in case you, 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 you have never pondered on it, the Bible tells us that every single star that we see all there, the trillions of them, God knows how many they are. The Bible tells us that he knows them by name. He named each of them. He counts them, not one force away. How much more you who are created in his image. But the psalmist is actually telling us that, that this same God who counts all the stars, who numbers them, who names them, <laughs> Who sets them in their place that not one can fall away without his being aware of him. This is the same God who is mindful of you. And he had to say, it was with deep contemplation that what is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you care for him? That is in, in, in verse um, 14. You know, when you think about the creator of all the universe, who holds the entire world in his hand, who measures the waters in the whole of his hands, the God of heavens who touch the mountains and they come forth in, in, in smoke, who covers himself with a firmament, he is the God that is telling you, mere mortal, made from clay, but created in his image, who he breathed his breath into, he is saying to you that I am mindful of you. I think about you. I take notice of you. I pay attention to you. And I care for you. Son of man, I care for you. 
he remembers you. One thing I want you to take away from this place tonight, well, if nothing else, is that God remembers you. He knows you by your name and he cares about you. The one, you know, just think about the splendor of the whole creation. Think about all of that. Who creates it, holds you special in his, hand, in, his, in his heart. Let's keep going. I'm sharing with you verses, scriptures that will tell you, convince you, no matter where you are right now, no matter what circumstances you may be going through, that your father, God, the God that you call your God, the God that you call your father, he is mindful of you. He cares about every detail of your life. In Psalm 136, and it's amazing, there's a lot of this in the Psalms, although we will go beyond the Psalms, but there's a lot of this truth that can encourage us and just uh, lift up our hearts, you know, when the enemy is trying to give us all those suggestions that nobody cares about you, nobody is thinking about you, nobody is calling you, nobody is, is checking up on you, and you are alone all by yourself, hmm. shake it off. The God of the whole universe, he cares about you. He is the God who chooses you when you're absolutely nothing. And so he said that God, hmm, in verse 23, that you of um, uh, Psalm 120, 136 verse 23, that you are a special possession. He remembers you in your weakness. I want to read that to us in another translation. Yeah. So if you look at the beginning, you know, the psalmist was calling all the things that God has done and they will respond for his mercies endure it forever, for his mercies endure it forever. And he said, you know, said, who remembers us in a lowly estate? God that does not despise small beginnings, he remembers us when we are low, when we are feeling you know, lonely, when we feel in this heaviness upon us, God does not forget us. He remembers us in our lowly estate. He knows our frame, Psalm 103 says, Psalm 103 verse 14 says, he knows our frame and he's mindful that we are dust. This is all the details that God knows about us that keeps us in his mind. And I want to go to that Psalm 103. There are a couple of the other things that I want to bring up to us there. Psalm 103. I, I want you to please take note of these verses. Because one thing that I know is that, you know, as I was sharing today, that the battlefield is always in our mind. It is in our mind that the enemy drops all the suggestions. Nobody cares about you. Um, nobody thinks about you. Nobody minds you. And you see, once he, 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 that suggestion comes and you do immediately counteract it with the word of God, it begins to take hold. You begin to mull on it. You begin to ponder on it. And then it becomes bigger and bigger. And then you begin to think of all the people who never call you, who never check on you, who don't care where hoping in the season and then the more that you think about it then the more you will begin to think about all sorts of things about them and then all the things that you have done that they have not responded to and you just find yourself in a foul mood you find yourself depressed you know feeling depressed and feeling very low and that is all that the enemy wants to do he wants to push you into that corner where you think that the whole world is weighing down on you where you are alone in all your troubles, and you need to recognize that this is the enemy making suggestions. That is his usual, usual tactics. And that's why I really love the song that I shared with us earlier. And it says that worship is my weapon of, my, of my warfare. It's my weapon in the battle. You know, in those moments, I begin to worship God. Why? Because I know He is mindful of me. And the Bible tells me this too. And so, how do I know this? Because I have read it in the Bible. I have experienced Him. 
I shared that the story I shared with you at the beginning. God bringing that word back to me. And it just, it, it felt as if it was holding me. And it, it made me feel, you know, better. And so we stop all these words in the heart. Against those days when the enemy is come with all his discouragement, with all his, you know, words that wants to stop our joy. And because we already have this word in our heart, we have made it for you. all the decisions of the enemy. And so, Psalm 103, uh, I want to go um, to um, verse 13 and 14. It says, As the Father pities his children, so do the Lord pities those who fear him. He knows our frame, <laughs> and he remembers that we are like dust. God knows just how frail we are, he knows how easy our mind can give in to all the lies and the suggestions of the enemy. He knows that the battle takes place there in our minds. He knows how fragile it can be. And that's why he, 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 he has compassion on us. He guards us. He gives us the word that can renew our mind. Let me read that to us in a couple of other translations just to amplify it for us. It says, like a father has compassion on his children, if you don't like the word pity, so that so the Lord God has compassion on those who fear him. So the question is, do you fear the Lord? Do you hold God in, in reverence? Are you, do you have a reverential fear of awe of God? Then you can be sure that you are God's child. You honor God and he thinks about you. He has compassion for you. He knows your frame. He knows what he made you from. And he treats you. Of, you're precious to God. You're fragile to him. He holds you that carefully. Now, let me go further. In, in you know, assuring you that God is mindful of you. I want you to know that God knows you by your name. I mean, there is nothing that uh, can be very disheartening if somebody, you meet someone, you know that person you have met before, and the person doesn't remember your name. Ah, it just looks like, oh, they've forgotten me. They don't remember me again. I mean, you may brush it off at that point in time, or you try to explain to the person, you know this place, this place, this happened, and that was where we could ask, oh, yeah, 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 I remember now. So... It it, 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 it it touches us deeply when people don't remember our names. So I want you to assure, I want to assure you tonight that God knows you by your name. And why am I so convinced of this? <laughs> yeah. Go with me to Isaiah 43, verse 1. It says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by your name. You are mine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Baba God. You summoned me by my name. I'm not a stranger to God. I'm not, it's not a God that deals with me from afar. He calls me by my name. I love this um, song um, that says, I have a father. He calls me his own. He'll never leave me. No matter what comes my way, he knows my name. He hears my every thought. He sees each tears that fall. And he hears me where I call. That is my father. He knows my name. He created me. He formed me. It says, fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. And so I know that I know that God knows Irene Titilola Oluwatosi Williams. Olumese. That's my, when I, when I think about Oluwatosi, I remember Williams. I am Irene Titilola Oluwatosi Olumese. He knows my name. He knows my maiden name and he knows me by my married name. Because he knew me right from the time that I was conceived in my mother's womb. 
Yeah, the Bible tells me he does. And if we go further to um, some, the same Isaiah, just to push a few chapters ahead to ch chapter 49. Again, he's saying there that, listen, O coastland to me, and take heed, you people from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb. This is Isaiah speaking. He has called me from the womb, from the matrix of my mother. He has made mention of my name. <laughs> While I was still an egg in my mother's womb, he had known me. While I was a small, tiny embryo, he knew me. He called me by my name because he formed me. He created me. That is how much God knows about you. That is how much of your details that are available to God, that is constantly before God. He knows you by your name. He calls you by your name. And let me give you a few more examples of people the Bible actually mentioned the God calling them by, the, by their names. And you can put yourself there. Just remind yourself, keep this in mind, that God knows exactly who you are. He knows exactly who I am, right from the time I was in my mother's womb. And so if we look at Exodus, we'll find a story in chapter 2, uh, Exodus 2, um, verses 1 to 6. It was the story of um, Moses. This guy has been in the backside. I mean, things did not go the way. He knew God has called him to save the people. He tried to save them. They, they said, Shay, you, we want to kill me as well. And he had to go on a run after he had killed somebody. And he was far away minding his uh, father-in-law's ship. And then he came across um, a burning bush. And... There in that burning bush, God, you know, appeared to him. And you know the first thing that God said to him when he appeared to him? He said, Moses, 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 Moses. <laughs> I need to find this. Um, yeah, just give me a second so I can read it to you. He called him by his name. Yeah, I'm almost there. Okay. Just that was just uh, when he was in the in the backside. I just want to get the. I think I made a mistake in what I wrote there. It's not chapter two. Okay. I'll soon get there. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. All right. There. Okay. Chapter 3. It was actually chapter 3. Yeah, in verse 4. It says, The Lord saw that he turned aside to look. He turned aside to look at the burning bush. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what did God say there? He said, Moses, Moses, he called him by his name. I, you know, Moses had not had any encounter with God until this period. He had been far in that wilderness all by himself. He had not had any encounter with God for years. He was there for almost 40 years, I think. And then God called him exactly his name. He heard his name. <laughs> My friends, God knows you. He knows your name. He knows the exact order of your name. He knows where you are. There's another person that God called by his name. Loud. And he heard it. We will find him in 1 Samuel. This chapter 3, this young man who had, who was, you know, a gift from God to his mother after a lot of a long time of waiting and the mother dedicated him back to God and so he was there in the in the in the temple as we know 
there was a lot of sin in the land at this point in time. The word of God is scarce, and yet there was a prophet there. And God called him in chapter 3, 1 Samuel. He says, Samuel, the guy was sleeping. And he said, here am I. And he ran to Eli. And Eli said, no, I didn't call you. He went back to sleep. God says, Samuel. He woke up again and he heard it five times. God called out his name. And then finally he said, Lord, speak. Your, your servant is listening. Friends, if God does not change. Let me assure you. If he knew all those people that I've mentioned by their names, he knows you by your name. He knows all the peculiarities about you. Make no mistake about it. Do not let your circumstances or the crisis around you or the battles that you've had to fight in life convince you that God does not know you or care about you. He knows you by your name. Let that sink in. He knows you. He cares about you. He are mindful, is mindful of you. And I want to tell you that he knows where you are located right now. <laughs> yeah. There's a friend of mine who did something that was, um, it was a significant, you know, it was, it meant a lot to me. It was a blessing to me. And I mean, I just didn't know what else I was going to say to her. And I said, look, God knows your address. He will locate you and meet you at your point of need. And she just laughed. I said, look, really, God knows your address. And I can prove it to you that God knows exactly where you are. He knows where you are located. He knows how to find you out. Even if you go and hide yourself in the deepest and farthest place. The Bible tells me that there the Lord will seek you out. Let's look at what Psalm 139 says. There is no hiding from God. There is absolutely nothing that can hide you from God. Not darkness. He will pierce through it. And he will come to you to search you out. Psalm 139 verse 7. It says, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? You cannot escape God's presence. You cannot run away from God. He knows exactly where to find you. He said, if I descend in, ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the seas, there you will find me. <laughs> Even there, your right hand will hold me. I want to read that to us in another translation so that it can sink in. It can sink in. Where can we go? Where can you go? So where can I go from your spirit? Where can I run and hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the realm of the dead, you are there too. If I fly with wings into the shining dawn, you are there. If I fly into the radiant sunset, you are there waiting. Where can I escape from God? You cannot escape from God. You cannot run away from God. He knows exactly where you are. And you will find also in Revelation chapter 2, um, the first part, the second part is not very nice, <laughs> but it's the, the Bible is complete. He was speaking to the church at Pergamon. But you know the first thing that the Bible says about the church at Pergamon in Revelation chapter 2 was that I know where you live. <laughs> 2a. Just go there. Just look at 2a alone. And it says to them, uh, sorry, um, 13a, ch Revelations chapter 2, verse 13a. And it said to the church there, I know your works and I know where you dwell. <laughs> Another translation says that, uh, <laughs> I know where you live. I know where you are living right now. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. I know where you dwell. God knows where you are living right now. He knows where you dwell. You see, come on, it's one of those um, churches that God has something against in, in, the, in, in Revelations. And he would tell them what they're doing right and what they're not doing right. But whatever the things that this, this particular city has be, you know, absorbed the worship of hidden, you know, they were beginning to because Satan leave, Satan leave because they were getting blending with that uh, with, the, with the city there. And Jesus is saying to them, I know where you live. I know what you're dealing with. where you are. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows where you live. He knows your address. He knows your postcode. He knows the street number. He knows exactly where you are. And you know, one of the things that you know really convinced me about that was the story, you know, that I, 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 I read in Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. You know, when um, Saul had that uh, Damascus, that experience on his way to Damascus, that the light of God, you know, came, God came down and spoke to him and, you know, uh, 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 on, the road to, on the road to Damascus. And if you go further down in that chapter, if you read it so that you can get the full background of it, I, we don't have enough time for me to read the whole story. But one thing that you will find there was that where he, he you know, the light came and he got, he felt it, it was blinded by the light of God that surrounded him. And so his, um, his servants who were with him had to lead him into a house. They brought him by hand. They led him as to lead a, black man, a blind man into Damascus for three days and three nights. And then he got to verse 10. The Bible says, and now there was a certain sub disciple at Damascus named Ananias. To him, the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, he knows me by name. And this is another person. God knows by name. This is the New Testament. He knew he knew where he was sitting. And he went to him and said, Ananias, <laughs> you hear the Lord call you by your name in Jesus' name. He says, Ananias. And he said, Hear my Lord. He says, Arise, go up to the street called Straight. Hmm? The name of that street is called Straight. It's like the Bible you know, appears to somebody and say, arise. Or God calls me and say, arise. Go to Shema Regiment de Conti. <laughs> that is the name of the street. So he said, go to that street and inquire for the house of, Jude, of Judas for someone called Saul of Tarsus. Behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he had seen a man named Ananias coming into him to put his hand on his on his on, on him so that he can see again. Two things I want you to bring out, I want to bring out of that that really emphasizes for you and I that pff, there's no detail of our lives. How much more that God doesn't know. He knew exactly the person he was gonna send to Saul. He located Saul in the street called straight in the house of Judas. He knew exactly where Saul was. And then he called Ananias by his name and said to him, go, give him this, the address where he should go. If we put it in modern day times, he gave him the, the house number, he gave him the street, he gave him the, the, the postcode, he gave him that if you are in my city, could the commune and the city, the country say, go there. This person is waiting for you to come and lay your hands on him. God knows you by your name. God knows your address. He knows where you are located. Because he, you, you, he is thinking about you. You are constantly on his mind. And never have his thought. Let that just sink in. That no matter what is going on in your world, 
you are never out of God's thoughts. He even numbers all the hairs on your head. I washed my hair and I combed it and I saw how much of my hair was breaking and I smiled. Said so that the, the Luke 12 verse 7, 7 tells me that the very hair on my head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't fear. God is mindful of you. You are valuable to God to the extent that every strand on my hair is numbered. Wow. 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 Every strand on my hair on your head is numbered. What beautiful thoughts to know that I am that valuable to God. Don't let anybody erode you of your self-worth, of who you are. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. God cares about you. You are never alone. You are never out of his mind. Talk please. If you are not out of his mind, you will be out of his sight. He knows all your sorrows. Like he said to Moses, where he called him in Exodus chapter 3 that I just read. He called him by his, by his name, Moses, Moses. And then he went further and he said, I have seen the afflictions of my people who are in Egypt. And God is saying to you, I have seen your affliction at your address, at your location. I have seen your affliction in your workplace. I have seen your distress in the, in, in, in the place where you are. I know what you're going through. I have heard your cry, your cry of distress by the reason of the tax masters that have lauded it over you down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Behold, the cry of the children of, of Israel has come up to me and I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Oppressed them. God knows exactly where you have been afflicted. Are you being harassed? God knows exactly where you have been harassed. Are you being distressed? God knows exactly where you are being distressed. He hears your cry. His ears are ever open unto your cry. He knows your afflictions. He knows your sorrows. He knows all those sighs, the deep sighs, the voiceless cry. That is how mindful you are to God. And when you are crying, <laughs> your tears never go to waste. Let me tell you, God is stored up your tears. That is his promise. This is the, so he keeps track of all my sorrows in Psalm 56 verse 8. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each of them in your book. They are before God. Friends, God cares about you. Every single tear that fall, that fell and rolled down your face, they are recorded before God in his book of remembrance. Don't let any silly, stupid devil tell you, that you are alone all by yourself. Nobody cares about you. Nobody minds you. It's a lie. Don't let that lie take root in your heart. What the devil wants to do is to steal your joy. What he wants to do is to make you to doubt God. And when you begin to doubt God, you doubt his goodness in your circumstances, in your situation. And when you doubt his goodness in your heart, you, will be, you will become resentful and angry with God. You are not alone. God cares about you. In all the six billion people on the surface of the earth, he knows exactly where you are located. He knows your name. He knows your suffering. He sees your tears. That is the God that we call your father. And you know, he keeps a record of all your good works. Psalm 56, you know, um, um, tells us that he, 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 he keeps a record 
of all your obedience acts. He keeps the record. He remembers his covenant towards you. See, this assurance that God has given us, that he is mindful of us, it causes us to trust in him. Like I read to you in Psalm 115, it says, trust in the Lord. All you who fear the Lord, trust in him. He is your helper. He is your shield. He surrounds you with his presence. You can never escape the presence of God. You can never disappear from his radar. Never. Never. You can never disappear from God's radar. You're constantly in his mind. Trust in the Lord and he will bless you. Isaiah 49 that we read earlier said in verse 14, he said, yet after everything that I've said, the Jerusalem says, the Lord has deserted us. The Lord has forgotten us. And what was the response? The never, never, even can a mother forget her nursing child? Can a mother feel no love for the child that she has born? Even if that is possible, I forget you. address he was every tear that you 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 cry he is still cry for his intention he is telling you trust in me and you shield i'm your helper i will never leave you alone i will never forsake you you are always in my thoughts you are on my mind isn't that a, an uplifting feeling to know that you're on somebody's mind? When somebody does an action to you, you does something that reminds you, that just tells you that this person is thinking about you. That's how I want you to be assured that God is thinking about you. Hey, you matter to God. You're precious to him. I pray that these words will find roots in your heart, spirit, against every suggestion and lie of the enemy. And it would it will so be engrafted in your heart that you would know without any doubt whatsoever that the King of Glory, the King of all kings, the Father of heaven. The father of all fathers, the creator of the heaven and earth, he cares about you. I pray that these words will renew your heart. And to change the way you think about yourself. You will see value in yourself, the way God sees you. And you will see yourself as somebody that is so precious that God is constantly thinking about you. If nobody else tells you that you matter to them, I want you to know that you matter to God. You matter to God so much that he's watching out for you. He's watching out for you. Every moment of the chosen day, he's watching out for you. And that your cry for help, he is heard in his time, in his way. On his terms, he will bring the deliverer for you. He will bring you the, the desires of your heart. You, your part is to trust him. And let this word keep your faith alive, aflame. I hope that you will take time to meditate on these words so that you can fan to flame your hope and your faith in God. And you can use that hope, that faith, to 
answer to the arguments of fear, to answer to all the arguments of despair, and to tell the enemy, shut up, keep quiet. I know my father is mindful of me and is thinking about me. Be encouraged. 